Hello, Thunder Wizards. All right, so today I'm going to talk to you about, once again, one of my favorite uh, deities, entities in this universe. You know of him as Thor, the pre-Christian Norse god of thunder. But what people don't um, understand a lot about Thor is that Thor is a god of deep, peaceful, meditative wisdom. And yet, what we know of him in the mythology is that he is half giant and he's big and he uh, is incredibly reactive and he is a warrior and, and you better be careful because if you offend him he will take his hammer and crash it on your head and so I want to share with you that that is not who Thor is and to understand what his function is who he is in his essence and the difference between that angry, reactive god of thunder uh, that um, people see him as and who he really is. And why does he do that? What is it that transforms him into this reactive, seemingly rageful, um, you know, uh, just better be careful, he'll lose his temper and throw his hammer right into your skull and the actual being that he is in his essence, which is one of deep peace, uh, of deep wisdom, and uh, the master of meditation. In fact, he is the master of the meditative mind. So I want to share my experience with you of, of Thor. Um, well, first, let me get into, you know, what got me thinking about this and, and is because I've been doing more energy work. And so when I do energy work, I connect to that life force energy, that chi, that prana, that lightning, that, um, that is the basics of electromagnetic and, you know, magnetic spiritual energy. We call it chi, prana, whatever you want, whatever word you want to use, om. Um, I've been doing a lot more of that and uh, connecting to the power of that and it and gets me thinking about that, the explosive power of, of Thunar. So uh, the, if there was somebody who you could call the Pope of modern neo-heathenism, especially in America, um, there is a person, I won't say his name, because I can't even think of it at the moment, but those of you who are heathens, you know who I'm talking about. He is like the poster boy, and um, you know, especially among uh, conservative uh, or um, folkish, quote unquote, neo-heathens, he's the guy. And he was uh, responsible for the resurgence of neo-heathen is one of the few people responsible for the resurgence of neo-heathenism uh, way back, I think, in the late 70s. Anyway, I won't say anything more about that other than a while back, years ago, I was flipping through YouTube and I was checking him out because he kept popping up in my awareness. Because, you know, what happened with me is that the gods of my ancestors came to me. I didn't go looking for them. They came to me. And uh, I had visions of them, starting with Mother Hulda, and then um, I had uh, an experience with, with Odin. Odin spoke to me, and um, I had also an experience with uh, Thor. Thor uh, connected with me very strongly. And um, so... Uh, as I went online and tried to connect with other people saying, hey, I found this, 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 and they started seeing all the stuff that I was doing. 
they just tore me a new one. Neo Heathens, you know, just did not like where I was coming from and what I had to say. And I was like, what is with these people? And then I find that there's this whole thing called Neo Heathenism and Focus Heathenism and all that kind of stuff. And and so I'm looking at who the who are these people? So this guy, the Pope of Neo Heathenism, was in some YouTube video was speaking to some a non-denominational religious organization and he's sitting behind this podium and he's trying to like like he's trying to explain to people who don't understand Norse paganism who the gods were and um, he starts talking about Thor and he starts describing Thor as this bull in a china shop you know big a uh, strong, angry, prideful person that, you know, would just, that he just reacts from his feelings. I mean, I don't know his exact words, but it was something like that. That he just reacts from his feelings and he's very brash and, you know, better be careful about, you know, Thor's wrath. And it was so hard to listen to because, you know, here's this guy who, you know, represents himself as, you know, he, these aren't the words he would use. He'd probably be more humble about it. You know, I don't know him. I don't see him necessarily as a bad person. I definitely disagree with him wholeheartedly when it comes to his idea of who can worship uh, the, you know, the Norse gods. But I don't know him, so I can't judge him personally. But, you know, um, but he definitely did not know who Thor was. And whatever... Uh, information he had gleaned from reading the lore, which is neo heathenism for saying pagan scripture. Of course, they would never admit that they use, but that's the idea. But it's, we're talking about the mythology. And if whatever mythology he's read about Thor, he's been very selective and very superficial and childish in his understanding of who Thor was. Because that is not at all who Thor is. Thor is not this brash, um, you know, short-fused thug who, if you say the wrong thing, is going to explode and just, you know, crack your head open. That's not at all who he is. He's not a bull in a china shop. In fact, he is the most even-keeled uh, entity, you know, among the most even-keeled. It means that when he goes to war, it's for a very good reason. He never just reacts from his anger. That is never the case. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have anger. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't explode. It just means that when he does, there is a very good reason. And it's not because he got his ego in a bunch because there is something or somebody that needs protecting. And he explosively uses the lightning and the thunder to protect. You know, it's interesting, I, I'm, I'm a drummer. I trained with African shamanic drummers. And, uh, you know, just talking, just, I was just teaching a class today um, before I came here. And I uh, was turned on by an individual, I don't remember the person's name, but he was talking about a um, certain drum rhythm, which is a shamanic drum rhythm, you know, uh, in, in uh, Mongolia, Siberia, um, in the Americas, uh, that typical uh, drum beat that you hear is at four beats per second, I believe it is, that that is actually something that um, will put you in a meditative state. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because in the African tradition, uh, there is a whole tradition of drummers who are um, initiates of Shango. Shango is, the, is none other than Thunar, than Thor. In fact, he has a hammer and he is the lightning god. And so these are drummers and they play, you know, I mean, if I, I could 
if I had it, I would play it for you. The kind of stuff that they play is that same rhythm that will put you into a shamanic trance. And it puts your brain into the theta waves. This is a type of meditation. The banging, the hammer, you know, banging on the drum is what, you know, entrains the brain to go there. So, uh, Shango is that same deity, Thor, Indra, Thunar, the god of, of thunder and lightning. So, um, unlike the neo-heathen pope, um, my experience with Thor was a personal experience first, and then I went to the lore. This is important. You know, because here's the thing. If you go into the mythology and you start trying to figure out who the gods are, you are going to project and impose your own internal reality onto it. So if you have been told that Thor is a reactive, angry person who has, he's like a bull in a china shop and you better be careful, um, then, you know, that's coming from either your projection or your lack of understanding. And, you know, the understanding that we have of the North God, Norse gods comes from academia and academia, you know, you know, I'm, listen, I'm all for going to college and learning, so don't get me wrong. But, you know, modern collegiate system is also based in uh, the Christian um, Catholic uh, university system. And so there is a lot of that bias. And you see this in science as well. I won't get into that. I'm a big believer in science. So again, don't don't misunderstand me. But, you know, um, the, the superficial understanding of mythology, that mythology is something that our ancestors needed in order to understand the scary aspects of nature before we started becoming these scientific creatures. And, so that, that superficial, uh, condescending attitude, because it comes from that. What is hap what's happening is you had these Christian monks who would teach history or whatever it was, and they would go, yes, and our barbarian ancestors and the mythology and all, all the gods, <laughs> but they were just so such superstition. There's still that bias about it. And so just because somebody decides to become a neo-heathen does not mean that they don't have those biases ingrained in them. And they, I mean, I remember, you know, just recently, somebody who claimed to be a Gothi, which is a priest, a neo-heathen priest, wanted to tell me that Loki does his mischief just because he thinks it's cute and it's fun. Have you read the myths? This is what I mean. It just, it really annoys the crap out of me. This is part of my job. Anyway, so... My experience with Thor was that uh, Thor reached out to me and I felt very strongly that I needed to do uh, a blood ritual to him, which is not a big deal. I'm not, I'm not saying you need to go and, you know, cut the head of a calf off or something. I just took a tiny needle and poked my finger and just a couple drops of blood and that was it. That was as much as I did. So, but I did a ritual to him and um, asked to connect with him and to learn from him and to uh, have his power and all that kind of stuff because I felt he was asking to do that. I felt very strongly. And what ended up happening over the next couple of days is I had this experience. I mean, I wasn't. Listen, I was expecting to have the experience of that wrathful thunder god. That's what I was expecting. That's not at all what I experienced at all. I was, um, this was way back when I was living in Idaho and it was a beautiful summer day and I was sitting on the grass somewhere outside during some event, whatever. And I'm looking up in the sky and I'm watching the blue sky and the clouds going through the blue sky and this wave of blissful, peaceful, deep, loving, uh, just the, one of the most beautiful and, and blissful, etheric energies just filled my heart and my body, and I knew it was Thor. 
And it was clear to me that he was saying, I am a God of the atmosphere. I'm a God that, that lives in the clouds, in the air. Uh, and, you know, that the etheric energy of the clouds and the air and the atmosphere, that's the essence of who he was. And that, and that was like, I was like, wow, that's Thor? So now we take a look at his name. His name in the uh, Germanic is Thunar. Thor is how you know of him, but Thor is merely uh, the Norse pronunciation um, contracted, but his actual name is not Thor, it is Thunar. Thunar comes from two roots. By the way, if, you're, if you haven't already, go to courses.thunderwizard.com. You can read my books about it, uh, especially uh, the first book, uh, The Thunder Wizard Path, and you can read, um, I believe it is, is it Mounting Sleipnir or Awakening Sleipnir or both? I can't remember which. But you can see which one of those where I talk about the name of the gods, the names of the gods and where they come from. You know, the, and in those books, you will find out that Frigga and Freja are not the same goddess. They're two different goddesses. I will break down what their names mean. I've done it numerous times. The name for Ingunar Frey. Why is Frey called Ingunar? Um, and uh, Woden and Thunar. So Thunar is Thu, the drop of rain. Also, the drop of ambrosial nectar. Also, the moon, the essence of the moon. The moon is made up of Thu. The moon is not Thu, the moon is Man. Man was the original word for moon, which was also the original word for human being. What does that tell you? It means that human beings, what makes them uh, their highest essence is when they operate from their man, their moon, their mind. The mind is not the intellect. The intellect is something altogether different. The intellect is what the majority of you, who especially if you're not my students, when I said mind, you actually thought of the intellect. You thought of this. Oh, mind. Oh, I have a great mind. I've read a bunch of books, and I've learned all kinds of things, and I've memorized this. And I can tell you why the this, that, and the, that's the intellect. That is not your mind. That is not your mind. Your mind is the part that reflects the sun, the soul, the sawwul. The rune for the, for the sun is that S-looking rune, and the S rune is sawwul. What is Sawul? S-O-U-L in modern English was S-A-W-U-L. Sawul became Sol. Sol. Sowilo. It means the soul. The soul is the sun. The mind is the moon. And the mind reflects the soul the same way that the moon reflects the sun. And so when you are in your mind, your man, your moon, it means you are reflecting. But the moon, the essence of the moon is Thu. And Thu means ambrosial nectar. And the moon is associated with healing, with uh, intuition, with uh, expansive uh, meditative mind. You know, when you go deep into your mind and you meditate and you become one with everything, that is the man. That is... That is the moon. The moon is also your dreams. Uh, the moon is your emotions. This is mom. It means that this is important. Gosh, I can't over, I can't over stress what I'm about to tell you. I wish I could tell you why, but personal, <laughs> tragic personal experience has proven this to me once again. We are emotional beings. If you are not in contact with all of your emotions, and if you are not able 
to sit with all of your emotions all the time, you are not fully human. If you cannot sit with your love, your hate, your anger, your sadness, your happiness, your joy, your inspiration, your desperation, your humility, your pride, if you cannot sit with all of those feelings, you do not have access to your full mind, which is meditation. The whole point of meditation is to be able to have all of your feelings and take conscious constructive action. That is the whole point of meditation. This is why, again, I have such a hard time with the modern love and light. I can't tell you how many people I've run into in my you know, decades of you know, following spiritual paths and traditions where you find people who will say, I am not going to lower myself to that vibration. People who can't tolerate their own negative feelings. And so they have to always bring themselves into this love and light. I'm happy. I'm full of love and light. And if you have any feelings that don't make them feel happy in love and light, you are of lower vibration. This happens with people who smoke a lot of pot. One of the things that happens when you smoke pot is it releases all kinds of feel-good chemicals. People who smoke a lot of weed are people who have anger issues. Period. End of story. I know I was one. Uh, and you, what happens with those people is those people talk about, hey man, everything is cool, and I'm like wide open, and and they, and if you, there's going to be a point where you're going to say something, and they'll blow up at you. They'll be the first people to just blow up at you because they are clouding their mind. You must have all of your feelings. You know, in other cultures, you know, here in the West, you know, we have a stiff upper lip, which we inherited from the British, which, you know, I'm here in Australia, the United States. We inherited a lot of the British uh, mindset. But, you know, that stiff upper lip where you, you don't cry and you don't, especially at funerals, you sit there and you, you stoically... You know, you, you, you hold it all back. You don't, you don't cry, you don't weep. That's not, you know, white people don't do that. Um, that is not um, what happens all over the world. There's some places, like I remember hearing from somebody from South Korea. This was a long time ago. But, you know, when, when somebody dies, people yell and scream and beat on the walls. In other traditions, you mourn for 40 days. You cry and you weep and you wail out loud for 40 days. I mean, they, in uh, Hindu tradition, they take it so far that some women, you know, some wives will go into the, um, the, bar the, you know, the, the cremation grounds and light themselves on fire next to their dead husband. You know, so they take it to extremes. And especially that whole 40 days, mourning and crying and weeping for 40 days, you know, we would never do that in the West. But we are so disconnected from our feelings. And what ends up happening is that we end up really traumatized. We end up really disconnected and disjointed. And we end up, you know, we end up, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, with schizoid personalities. It's really awful. So, um, you know, and, and like in, you know, like Italian or in uh, Latin countries, you know, you'll walk into a family and everybody will be screaming at each other, you know, yelling and screaming, wives and husbands throwing pots and pans at each other and all that. But I tell you, man, those people are there. Those people love each other. They love each other, but they express their feelings. They let it out. And a true, you know, a, a, a true balanced emotional 
place is to be able to have all of your feelings with each other. You can, you can look your partner in the face and say, I want to kill you right now. You make me so angry. You have to be able to tolerate that. Otherwise, it's, you're not fully integrated. This is man, human. The word human is something else, but originally, you know, in the Germanic languages, when we talked about humans, we called them man. Men and women, both, both female and male, were both man. They were moon. They were mind. They were emotions. And this is one of the fallouts of the Christian religion. It came and wiped that out and told us to stuff it down and, you know, stiff upper lip and all of that. It's incredibly destructive. It's killing people. Stuffing all that stuff down will kill you. People are dying of all kinds of diseases, and part of the reason is they just don't allow themselves to have all their feelings. Thunar, the lord of the mind, the lord of the moon, the lord of the ambrosial nectar. Thunar is seen as this impulsive, emotional person because he is the lord of the emotions. My experience with Thor early on again I had that experience in the woo and the wow and all that and I was talking with somebody and out of my I was not in my integrity I was feeling judgmental and about myself and what did I say I'm trying to remember what I said I was talking about Thor and I, I can't remember what I said but I said something trying to be self-effacing having to do with my connection to him and it was not it was actually a disrespectful thing and as soon as i said it i felt inside of me this just rush of just emotion come out of me how dare you was the feeling how dare you talk badly about your family now at the moment i heard that i felt like really guilty like oh my god I just, I just disrespected Thor, and I feel so bad. It wasn't until later that I remembered that, you know, and of course, once that came, and it, it came and passed. This is the true essence of anger, is that it's just an explosion that passes. It's the lightning cracking, and then it's done. Mars, something else. The term for Mars in Vedic is angaraka. Does that sound similar to another English word? Anger. It's the same word. Anger means to smolder. So resentment is not the lightning. The lightning flashes and is gone. The burst of anger. How dare you talk against your own family? Anger smolders. It is the smoldering, you know, the fire that just smolders. There's a, there's a bushfire out here. That's why I've got the fan on and all the windows closed. Because it's hard to breathe. There's just smoke everywhere. It's, it's smoldering. The fire is smoldering. That's anger. But the explosion is not anger. It is the light. So what I remembered after feeling guilty about it afterwards, I thought, hang on. Thor said to me, how dare you talk against your own family? He was saying I was his family. <gasps> what? That I was part of his family. And he was telling me a truth, a bitter truth because I was talking bad about myself and about him. He wasn't upset because his pride was hurt. He was upset with me that I had said something denigrating in a supposedly self-defacing way, a denigrating thing about my connection to one of my family members, which was Thunar, the lord of the mind, the, god, the lightning god. He was hurt, not because I said anything about him, but because in that moment I had 
disconnected myself from him. And that was hurtful to him and he was scolding me because it was I was harming myself. And once that flash was there, it was gone. Now those were two experiences very early on. Now I don't have that I don't have that kind of communication going on that I'm aware of. But I, it taught me a lot about him, that the essence of him is the essence of love and peace, that essence of the etheric vibrational energy of the, uh, of, the, of the atmosphere, the clouds and the blue sky. That is Thor. That is Thunar, Lord of the drop. The lightning is when Thor goes to battle in order to release the healing, nurturing waters of life. So there's numerous mythologies in the Vedic mythology about Indra. Indra is Thunar, Thunar. Indra is in Thura, the uh, full drop king, full moon king, the king of the full moon. The mythology surrounding Indra uh, and his lust for the Soma, which is the Thu, um, Thor lusts for the mead. Odin drinks wine, and Thor drinks mead. Mead is the honey. It is the nurturing, sweet um, essence of Thu, the moon. And so Indra drinks Soma, which is also the, the intoxicating drink of the elixir of immortality. He gets intoxicated by that. And so Indra is, um, the myth behind him is that what he does every month is he chases after the moon. And when the moon is at its full, I mean it's full, filled with Thu, with the nectar of immortality. When the moon is full, then Indra goes up and grabs the moon and wrestles it down. It takes him, takes him two weeks, and he wrestles the moon down underneath the earth. And when he has it underneath the earth, he then presses it. He flattens it and presses out all of the Thu, the Soma. And once he's done that, then it slips out of his grasp and flies back up in the sky. And the Thu comes out of the earth. And it's the dew, the dew drops. Dew, Thu, same thing. The, you know, you can, um, anyway, I won't get into that. Um, but that's the dew drops that come out of the grass. And it looks like it's water coming out of the earth, which it is. It's, it's you know, as... The earth cools down, you know, it's all the sun is, out, is on it all day, but then at night the heat from the earth comes up and the moisture comes out. And that's why sometimes you go out at night and there's like this cloud on the ground. You know, your feet are walking through this cloud on the ground. That's being released from the earth and then it condenses on the plants. It's the thu. It is the nectar of immortality, the dew. And it's because... Thor has grabbed the moon underneath the earth and, and pressed out, squeezed out all of the nectar of immortality, and then it slips out from his grasp. And then that's why you see a sliver of the moon. And for two weeks, that sliver of the moon gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's full again. It's like a ripe fruit. And then Indra flies up in the sky, grabs it, and wrestles it down under the ground. Um, that's, you know, this is who the lightning god is. Lightning is what he does when he's protecting humans, the man, when he's protecting the mine, the moon, because he's all about protecting the moon. He wants to protect the moon from those beings that seek to destroy it. And what are those beings? Those beings are the thirses. Again, you have that root of Thu. And that is why the Thurisaj rune is the rune for, there, there it is, 
the Thurisaj rune or the Thurs rune is the rune of Thunar. You know, people call it a thorn and it's this, you know, thing you use to curse people. People have no idea what the hell they're talking about. It just blows my mind how little people know. One part is true. It is a thorn. What does a thorn do? A thorn protects a rose. When, you know, you go to grab a rose and pick it, you better be careful because that thorn will prick you. And you're, ah. So you can use it to protect yourself from somebody who's trying to pluck your flower your mind one of the uh, the elemental um, sim symbolic symbols for the ether element which is Jupiter which is Thor which is Indra is flowers so that makes perfect sense when you want to give an offering to of the ether element to Jupiter you give flowers uh, go to courses.thunderwizard.com if you want to get your astrology looked at. And I can tell you if in your chart the, the planet and the deity associated with the planet that you need most, maybe you need to offer flowers, which would be the ether element. So the Thurisaj rune is just that. It drives away that which seeks to steal the mind the emotions. This is why Thor is fighting in the east because the east is the direction of the ego, the self, and when the self gets bloated and can't um, empathize with other people it becomes a giant, it becomes a thirst, uh, the, a bad kind of giant that has no empathy and just takes people and bites their heads off and, th and uh, Thunar, Thor, goes off to fight those beings, which means he keeps our ego in check so that we will always uh, respect people's boundaries. This has to do with emotions as well. If you do not have strong uh, emotional and psychological boundaries, then other people's feelings will be intolerable for you. If somebody's angry, if somebody is sad, I can remember, you know, when I was at um, the memorial, you know, a few friends of my, uh, when my fiance passed two years ago, a few of her friends uh, invited me to come to a memorial, and there was one woman there that was obviously not comfortable with people's sadness because she was saying, "Hey, everything's okay. Hey, you don't have to be sad. Hey, look," she just couldn't tolerate people being sad. Um, I often have the experience because I have a lot of feelings and when I feel something strongly, you know, I, you can feel it. You know, I wish I could do something about it, but it's just the case. I have a lot of intense feelings. So if I have anger or if I have, if I'm not in the best mood, you'll know it. Not because I'll be yelling and screaming. I don't do that. Um, what will happen is you'll just feel the ground shake as I walk around because I'm having a feeling. Um, but, you know, um, my true friends are able to tolerate that. They can be around me when I'm in those moods and they know that I'm not going to say it hurt them or they know that I'll work through it. But that is a sign of good boundaries when you can be around people when they have their feelings. This is the mind. This is true meditation. And this is who... Thunar is. He is the Lord of true meditation. In the Vedic tradition, Indra fights against Varuna, uh, or is it Varuna? Vritra, sorry, fights against the serpent of limitation. And he, he tears open the skies to let down the Thu, let down the drops of water. And so uh, Vritra is limitation who holds back the waters and so this whole fight between Indra and Vritra is the same as Thor fighting against Jormungandr which is the serpent that encircles the world he brings limitation so there's this constant battle between Thor and limitation he never wins 
It's a battle he never wins. And if he ever did win that battle, we would all lose our lives. It is the battle of the electromagnetic force against the force of gravity. It is what keeps the sun from burning itself out too quickly. It is what keeps me from falling through this chair because the source of gravity, the force of gravity is pulling on me, trying to pull me to the center of the earth. But because of the electromagnetic force that binds the molecules of the chair that I'm sitting on, I don't get pulled down through the earth. Thor in the Norse mythology goes with Loki to um, uh, to anyway to another realm which uh, is lorded over by Utgard Loki, which is the outer court, the outer yard Loki, and this Loki creates uh, uh, a. Uh, an illusionary world where Loki and Thor have to go through these different tests in order to, you know, escape. And one of the tests is that Thor has to fight an old woman and he loses. And he's fighting this old woman and she drops him to one knee. Now she can't beat him. She couldn't completely drop him and pin him, but she dropped him to one knee. And even then they were like, oh my God, you, you did that well with her? It turns out afterwards when the illusion, the smoke of the illusion clears, they find out that the woman, the old woman that he was wrestling with was time, which is a giant. Time is nothing other than limitation. Saturn, it represents time. Saturn is the planet of limitation. Jupiter is the planet of expansion. So they fight with each other. There's this fight between expansion and limitation. This is why Thor is constantly fighting against uh, limitation. He's fighting against Jormungandr, which is the limitation, the, the, the snake that encircles the earth. Vritra, who holds back the waters of life, limitation. And Indra strikes, you know, uh, sends the lightning and the thunder. So it's interesting that, you know, when we're, when a thunderstorm hits, what's the first thing that happens? You hear the crack of the thunder and then the rain falls because that is Indra. That's Indra slicing open the skies to release the waters of life. It is Thor's hammer striking um, Jormungandr to release the waters of life. Because where does Jormungandr live? In the ocean. What is the ocean? The ocean is the generator that creates the clouds and the rain. Our ancestors knew what they were talking about, even if they didn't know why they were talking about it. This is true mythology. True mythology is the gods, the ancestors, teaching us holographic truths through stories that are timeless. True mythology is timeless. If you're reading a story and it's dated and you don't understand it, it's not mythology. The Bible, perfect example. Stories in the Bible are dated. They don't have any relevance. They're not true mythology. The stories that we read in the, myth, the Greek mythology, uh, the Norse mythology, uh, this is timeless. The, it, people 10,000 years from now will be able to understand what it means. So this is Thor. This is why Thor can be a, a god of explosive power and also a god of wisdom. In the Vedic mythology, um, Thor, I won't get into it, I can't remember it, I've talked about it before, I've written about it, but Thor, uh, excuse me, Indra um, is very clear. It's talking about the outer layers of the brain. The the, you know, the, the higher levels of thinking, that Indra is related to that. And um, that is the part of our brain that gives us the ability to handle our instincts, to fight, to flee. If, you're ha if you know, one of the things that my teacher teaches uh, is that 
Uh, society, you know, the highest level of society is to be able to sit with somebody regardless of what it is that they're feeling. And as long as it's just words that are being used, you can, you know, you can sit and tolerate anything. I haven't mastered that yet. I know that there are things that you could say to me that might make me want to get up and storm out of the room. And if people need to get up and leave, and they have to get up and leave you, it means they're operating from their reptilian brainstem. Fight or flight. Tend or befriend. These are, this is the fear-based amygdala operating from that. Thor operates from the highest brain. When we're operating from fear, our higher brain doesn't work. In fact, you know, when, when you get super regressed, um, what ends up happening is you don't remember. I've, I've, I've experienced it. You know, I'll tell you what happens with me. If I get, uh, if I'm, you know, like especially in a relationship, if I get, if I feel as though somebody has attacked my integrity or judged me in a certain way, uh, you know, I will, I will regress and I will go into this place uh, where um, I get very hurt and I get very angry. And you could apologize to me. I mean, you could apologize to me five or six times and I won't hear you because I'm so wrapped up in trying to get you to understand what you did to me. You know, that's one of my failings. I'm learning. I'm getting better with it. But, you know, I've also experienced it on the other end. When people go deep into their emotions, into their fearful emotions, anger, rage, fear, sadness, trauma, they go deep into that. They don't remember. They remember or they misremember. Whole chunks are gone out of their memory. This is the reptilian brainstem, and Thor represents the ability to have all of your feelings, to sit above them, to sit in that meditative mind where you are, you are in all of the feelings, but you can see things from above, like the moon. You can look down on the earth from above, but you still have all of your feelings. This is, the, this is why Thor is the priest. And in ancient times, Thor was used to sanctify the, uh, the sacred space, the ve, the temple. He was used for that reason. He's the priest. The essence of Thor is that of a priest. He only, he only becomes the god of lightning and thunder when he is cleansing corruption and negativity. That's why Thor fights against the, the thirsts. Um, back in those days, uh, we didn't have the word demon, you know, like we do now, a fallen angel, a demon. But the closest that our ancestors had to demons would have been thirsts. And Thor fights them. So this is the transformation. This is me. I am the thunder wizard. And um, this is what happens when you work with me, when you follow my teachings. You know, at some point you will be transformed. Uh, anyway, neo.thunderwizard.com if you want to learn the four tools to be able to master this universe. Courses.thunderwizard.com you can find my books. I talk about all this stuff. My books, my, um, my, my DVDs, all of my uh, video, online streaming video courses, and all of my services, including astrology and rune readings. Subscribe, hit the bell button. And uh, before it's too late, I have to say thank you to Grace Chandler. Grace is uh, one of my, well, right now my only producer. And that is somebody who subscribes uh, at the second to highest level is a producer. And so um, I give thanks to her. And you can check out her channel, uh, excuse me, her website, gracechandler.com. If you want to become a... Uh, if you want to support the channel and become a producer, you can go to thunderwizard.com and scroll down and uh, subscribe at that level. If you want to become an executive producer, which nobody has done yet, you can do that as well. If you want to, if you have the means and you want to support the channel, that's why. And I'll put your name up and uh, thank you and uh, send you to 
send people to your website if you'd like. Um, so that's it. We'll keep talking about all this stuff going forward, but I just wanted to talk about Thor and the mind and the emotions and how the thunder god can be explosive and powerful and still be the god of the meditative mind. All right, that's it for my ramblings for now. See you guys later.